SSD of our IOCs. Thank you very much. So, hi everyone. I am Victor Barrow, and I am delighted to present uh, you today how we work to ensure IOC quality at CertFR. Uh, so, CertFR uh, is uh, a part of ANSI, the French National Cybersecurity Agency, uh, which is in charge of different missions for cyber defense in France. The operation departments host CertFR. Uh, and I work in the oper operation departments in the CTI tooling units. Um, in the operation, operation departments, uh, IOC is a key topic, uh, as is, it's the, the center of the three main activities of the departments, uh, CTI, detection, and incident response. I work in the IOC management unit, which provides IOC related, related, related tools such as MISF, coordinates IOC processes, and tries to ensure that the IOC base is kept as clean as possible in time. So we try to make the IOC hand spinner uh, spin as good as possible. What I want to share with you today is why we did what we did, and you will quickly understand. Uh, on a more technical level, oh, we did that. What are the problems we encountered with the systems, and how the system could be built a bit differently today. So first, on what we want to avoid. By managing the central IOC base of quite a big team, we discovered various, various ways to capitalize indicators uh, and to use MISP in a suboptimal way for our usage. Uh, we will go through some of the examples of what we saw uh, that causes problem. So, uh, first of all, uh, we, I took a, a screenshot of a random MISP instance pulling events from uh, other MISP instance and I took a screenshot of uh, its tag list, and uh, we've got not one, not two, but nine TLP white tags. And yes, uh, this is our own uh, TLP tags, but this is another example because uh, we migrated to the once and only official TLP and PAP tags uh, as seen on the public feed of the third effort. So it's the small advertisement moments. Uh, this is the public feed uh, of the, on the search affair website, uh, containing IOC published on uh, public search affair reports, and in a nicer format uh, than in a table inside a PDF. Uh, we also want to avoid incompatib incompatible tags on events. Uh, MISP does a great job for TLP and PAP, for example, by displaying a big red message box saying that these tags are not compatible, and that's really great. Uh, but the event is still created on the platform with the two tags, and now we are lost. And uh, we got little more complex situations with tags uh, not in the same taxonomy, but that are still incompatible. What about, for example, um, TLP clear and uh, secret uh, French, classif Fr French classification secret event on this. And uh, finally, all of this situation exists somewhere, and other attributes containing a list of IP address. People not finding their attributes because there was a typo in the certifier org name or an hash, an hash in a file name attribute. So now I think uh, you understand pretty much why we need to ensure that people were following a bit stricter rule to be sure that us, the team managing IOCs, have enough infos to manage them and to share them. And the consumer of these IOC will have current and well-built IOCs. And finally, that in two years, the base will still, in the same will still be in the same shape and analysts will be able to find back uh, their data. So everything starts with users. Uh, we needed to build a tool that, 
that ensure that most of the situations we just saw do not happen. Uh, but we also want to provide an analyst uh, with a simple and, if possible, automatic and seamless way to capitalize the IOC onto our platform. So we built an internal lib wrapping around, around PyMISP, which handles direct interaction with the MISP instance. The internal lib uh, offer most of what PyMIS provides, creating and updating events and attributes, tagging and tagging, and uh, managing taxonomies, galaxies, but applies some more rules that we will see in a minute. The lib handles the formatting of, PyMI of my MISP events, MISP attributes, or MISP objects uh, to pass them to PyMISP. And finally, the main capitalization tool uh, is based, based on our internal lib and handles user interaction. So let's talk a bit about the internal lib we provide to analysts. Uh, let's look a bit on what it does and how it works. It is written in Python and is based on PyMISP to handle interaction with the MISP server. As I said earlier, it wraps around PyMISP to provide most of what this library provides, but applying more rules. Providing uh, users with a lib gives them the ability to build their own tools. That was an important point for us. Uh, because some of our users are in geopolitics and need to have a graphical interface to easily capitalize their data. But Reverse Engineer could automate some of their actions through some uh, CLI uh, magic, CLI magic. So we need to be able to adapt uh, our rules to their workflows. So to avoid all we saw earlier, we need to apply some rules that analysts need to follow. We need to be sure that all the required fields are present in events. We need to be sure that all the tags and infos are present on events, like TLP, PAP, lifecycle, etc. We need to be sure that the tags applied on the ones are the ones we standardized, uh, like the TLP tags, for example. We also need to ensure consistency between tags. We will see an example of in, an example in a few minutes, uh, but like consistency between TLP tags and French classification tags. And finally, we need to apply a bit of type validations to try to limit the fat finger syndrome. For example, putting two or more IPs inside an attribute. Type validation is applied so consumers know that the IOC they get are well formatted. Uh, we check for RFCs like IP formatting, IP private spaces, uh, ashes format, or date, date time format. Uh, this is a simple example on how the internal library wraps around PyMISP object. Here is a, 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 PyMISP, a MISP event. Then we are able to manipulate it with our own set of rules. For example, the lib provides a way to set the reliability of an event, uh, but ensure that the reliability uh, level provided is a well-defined defined level. So only a uh, reliability level of the re reliability values uh, list can be added to an event. The internal lib also provides a way to check compliance, for example, between um, French classification level and TLP level. Uh, this can handle a bit more complex situations, like the ones we talked about earlier. It is verified that you don't create a French secret event uh, that, it, that is uh, TLP clear which will be a, a bit of a problem. Second, let's talk about the main capitalization tool we provide to analysts. Uh, it, what it does is to provide a, a set of Python scripts uh, to analysts, analysts to help them create and update event on MISP uh, while enforcing our rules, ma managing and maintaining the IOC lifecycle, doing some of the admin stuff, such as managing galaxies and taxonomies, and finally, exporting IOCs using some more rules. 
Uh, it's based on our internal lib, uh, but analysts can build their own tooling if they want. The only rule is to follow the rule. Uh, analysts can capitalize data without interacting with the MISP GUI. Uh, everything we provide is used uh, locally on their posts and uh, use the MISP API. So, for example, uh, creating an event is as simple as launching this command, uh, providing a YAML file um, containing all inf infos about the event. Uh, and we will see in a minute uh, what is this YAML file. So analysts need to capitalize their data on MISP uh, while following some strict rule. They do so by uh, using the script we provide them, and the YAML file contains all the information uh, about the events analysts are currently working on. This gives them the ability to have uh, event creation versioning and to save events step by step. And working with uh, formatted, formatted text files gives them the ability to use unmade or provided tools to automatically complete their files based on other data sources and to enrich them. Most of the YAML file can be automatically generated and analysts just need to check uh, coherence in the file. So our analysts have access to all kinds of tools to help, them format, to help them format these files, and I think that, in my opinion, this is the best one we provide them. While working on uh, their events, analysts have advices on how to capitalize their IOCs. For example, uh, their the text states that they need to set a value for the event's PAP and that the value must be clear, green, amber, or red. Uh, if they want to do something else, the script will raise a not so great Python error uh, and uh, will state the, the reason of the problem. Here, for example, uh, we see that the PAP white uh, is not a valid value and should be PAP clear. Another important part of what we call IOC quality is uh, if it's uh, at its right lifecycle places, place. So having hold IOCs uh, in detection or using in creation IOC can cause a lot of problems. So the capitalization tool is also used to maintain the IOC lifecycle. When an analyst is creating an event, it is marked, marked as creating. Uh, in this state, everyone knows that uh, it is not fully functional and verified, and uh, that it needs to be handled carefully. Then when the analyst has completed all the steps to ensure that the quality of the IOC is at least okay, uh, so the IOC is tested against internal and external bases to find potential high false positive makers, or to check if, for example, the IP address does belong to cloud provider, etc. The capitalization tool will mark the event as qualified to tell to consumer that this event has completed all the required steps to be put in production. More information will be set on IOCs, uh, like if they can be used for detection, online or offline, etc. Finally, when an IOC becomes ir irrelevant, for example, an IP address uh, change, it is marked as archived, archived, so not to be used anymore. That way, consumers can be sure that if they filter on qualified attributes on MISP, uh, every IOC that will, they, they will get had followed the qualification steps, steps to answer its, its quality. Answering IOC quality is also answering knowing where where they are and who use them. So the capitalization tool provides us way to ensure that we export what we want to export, ensure that no sensitive data is left left on IOCs, and logging and saving action made when exporting. Because we work with quite sensitive data, and sometimes there is sensitive data uh, in events infos or in comments, and we need to be sure that uh, no sensitive data uh, is left behind. 
So uh, these rules ensure that we keep track of what goes out of the platform and uh, what is cons consumed outside of MISP. And doing so, we can also track down who access uh, IOCs and who consume them. So some IOCs have uh, strategic, because some IOCs have uh, strategic values and need to be ended with care. So knowing where they are is pretty important. Building this tool, we faced some pretty hard points. Uh, as all the verifications are made locally on analyst computers, uh, they could be bypassed by using directly by MISP, for example. So keeping the IOC base clean is also an organizational role. It's not specific to MISP, uh, but applying more rules and requiring scripts to be used uh, leads to a bit of friction. We reduce analyst liberty by needing them to use our own tools. And uh, we have uh, really different profiles, uh, like economics, geopolitics, people working with the same tools as uh, reverse engineers. So we need to provide a vast amount of tooling uh, suitable for everyone. Um, today we could do some of the things we do with the lib uh, and the tool with uh, Miss Workflow. Uh, it could do a great job, great job as it answers some of the difficulties we raised the slide before, because uh, checks checks are made on the server side, so there is no bypass, and checks are mostly seamless for analysts. Uh, because they do not require uh, specific tools, they could use the, the MISP uh, GUI uh, for capitalization. So it would reduce a bit of the frictions. Um, so in this slide, this is uh, an example on um, described as, as just the best step. So it's not the best way to do it, but uh, we could transform PAP white. Uh, tags into PIP clear uh, on events with the MISP workflows, what the lib does um, when, capitalist, capita when an analyst capitalizes uh, with, with wrong tags. Um, but it has some problems uh, because first, just we simply developed the script long before uh, the workflow were introduced into MISP. And secondly, we want to stop analysts from doing an action if they do not follow the rules. And I think that today there is no event before save, which could be a blocking action um, that blocked the event creation. So for example, it could block the event creations in case of mistagged, mistagged events. And as you saw uh, in uh, the presentations, we apply uh, a lot of rules on event creations to ensure IOC quality that uh, relies on external tooling, like the qualification step, step uh, of an attribute which asks other bases uh, for information regard regarding um, uh, their qualification step. So uh, we will need to rebuild a lot of the logic inside workflows to, to adapt to the capitalization tool, uh, to adapt the capitalization tool to miss workflows. Um, to conclude, so this was a pretty high level presentation of the capitalization ecosystem we provide our user with at CertFR. The main takeaways for the, these presentations are that managing IOCs is pretty hard uh, and fun, finding conventions even more. We try to provide a way for analysts to work as smoothly as possible while following some rules. Uh, agreeing internally, but also with other actors on capitalization, um, capitalization conventions uh, to speak the same language and to automate as possible uh, is a difficult task. We do so by providing a library, giving analysts the ability to adapt to their own workflows um, while following our rules. Um, and that's why we also provide uh, some of the shelf tools 
to smooth the most out uh, activities. Um, last but not least, uh, Ansi Ayos, if you are French. So thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentations and you learned probably something. And your questions are more than welcome. Thank you very much. Questions? Questions? Oh, there. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation, Eric Roman from uh, High Commission for National Protection. <clears throat> you mentioned it's hard uh, to manage IOCs. If you have one event per day, it's not so hard. So to give a, 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 a figure on why you're mentioning it's hard, could you, without uh, revealing any secrets, how many events you are treating per day? We manage multiple bases. Um, our internal bases as like uh, I, I would say 10 10,000 events and I don't want to, 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 to say I think 4 million attributes uh, and we that's our um, uh, I presented last year that we have a disconnected uh, MISP instance. That's our disconnected MISP instance. And we have connected instance that have like uh, tens of millions of uh, attributes and tens of millions of uh, IP addresses uh, that need to be managed, uh, that need to follow the same rules uh, because they are consumed automatically by uh, multiple actors and so on. Follow up. Um, two additional questions. So how many people uh, are you and your team to manage this number of events? Just to give uh, have another understanding. And also, you mentioned in your in your slides previously that you archive certain events. This is the IOC lifecycle. But I was quite surprised because you mentioned if an IP is decayed, for example, we will archive the event. But normally an event, a MISP event, could contain multiple IPs, so you will not... Thank you for the precision. Um, so in uh, the operation departments, we are 200, uh, which work with IOCs. Uh, there is, I think, 40 analysts to capitalize data onto MISP, and... Um, I think 50 or 60 uh, analysts who consume data for uh, detection or uh, uh, incident response. And for um, archived uh, IP address, for example, uh, it's, uh, I don't think that was clear, so it, it's not the event which is archived, it's uh, at, the, at the attributes or object level that we say that it's archived and the consumer will we, we just pull uh, attributes which are not uh, marked as archive, archived. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Any more questions? None. Everything was clear. Okay. Thanks for your talk. <laughs>